So for all of you ladies out there who think you might like to start a business, but you have a family, children, husband, responsibilities, and you just think that there's no way that you can possibly juggle all of that, my guest today is here to tell you that you are dead wrong. Welcome to the Rebel Tribe Podcast, where empowerment meets attitude and sass meets savvy. We are not just another podcast, folks. We're your virtual tribe of fierce females that are ready to conquer the world. So join us as we smash through those stereotypes, break barriers, and redefine what it means to be a woman in today's world. Get ready to see more, do more, and be more with the Rebel Tribe Podcast. It's time to unleash your inner rebel, ladies, and rock the world on your terms. And my guest today is Sherry Nichols. And yes, she is a mom of six, okay? <laughs> six. And... <laughs> You know, she's got her husband, she's got all the stuff, and, and she just started a business. She's here to tell us how she's doing all that. So let's get right into it. Sherry, say hello before we start. Hello. <laughs> let's get right to it, because when I first talked to you, this was the thing that just blew my mind, because I struggled with one, <laughs> and then I remarried to, to someone who had a child of his own, so then I had two, and I was like, oh my gosh, okay, <laughs> yeah. So you're a mother of six, and you've yes. gone through the experience of divorce and remarriage, just like me. How have these life transitions shaped that, that person that you are today? I think that it has taught me so much. It's taught me resilience and how to teach my children in a better way. It's been, it's been a beautiful experience. As much as it sounds scary and the divorce and remarriage, it's been... It's been kind of awesome. And the story I get to tell now is really good for my kids or for the people to hear that it's okay, that we're all okay. <laughs> Everybody can do this. <laughs> so what are some of the lessons you've learned about resilience from, from both your personal life and, and bouncing back from the divorce and everything, and then your professional life that have influenced how you do raise your children? I've learned a lot. So I started out with a job in the hospital system and I got laid off out of the blue. They had got bought out and they just laid me off and I got caught up in that. And I was, I got to a point where it was like, I didn't know what to do with myself. I didn't. And I, I had a way of teaching my children success is through your job and success is through it. But really success is not defined that it does not define your success. So I learned through that. It kept me going and being stronger for my children to show them that it's okay to not go back to what you were doing for so many years. And it's okay to be somebody new at 47. <laughs> and yes, you're hearing, we have a little bit of a glitchy internet tonight, folks, but that is life on the dirt road. If you hang out with me, you know that happens and there isn't a darn thing I can do about it. So Roll with it, ladies. Okay. <laughs> if it gets really, really bad, we'll try it another day. But if it's just a little bit of a slowdown here and there, we're going to keep on pushing through because, unfortunately, I keep asking Elon for Starlink. And, unfortunately, he keeps ignoring me. So this is as good as it gets. <laughs> Proof positive that it doesn't matter. Just keep, as, as she just said, it doesn't matter. Just keep going. So let's just keep going. So how, and I'm asking this because like I said, it just, I was active duty when I had my children. So it was like, oh my gosh, how oh, do you wow. balance the roles of being a mother and a wife and now an entrepreneur? It's, it is a fine line, but I think it's fun. You have to find that balance of I've got to spend time with my children. I've got to still raise my children. I still need to be that mom that they they need and they deserve and they should have. And being an entrepreneur or somebody who can be, I found something that I could be home with them and that I could have them with me, that I can teach them and understand what I'm doing. So that way they can be a part of what I'm doing. Um, my husband is like an incredible, my husband now, he's an incredible support. He's he is huge in helping me with the kids and helping me with things like that so that I can do something new and something, something completely out of my comfort zone. And 
I don't know, being, being a mom to all the kids and making sure you keep up with them. It is just, I know it's hard. It is. And I, I struggle. I, I still struggle. And I pray about it constantly of making sure that I give each of them the attention that they deserve and need. But I think that I, I find a balance through waking up every morning and having a routine and knowing what I'm going to do and when I'm going to do it and help them understand that routines are good and that I can do this right now while you do this. And so I think just routines, trying to get it all together and we have a busy life. <laughs> so yes, routines. I was going to ask you about those because that was the only way I could figure out that you could possibly do all this is that you have like uh, some kind of a routine or a schedule or something, practice yes. something. Would you mind sharing a few of those with uh, with us that still struggle? <laughs> so we wake up pretty early. So when I wake up, the first thing we do is usually we try to work out. I try to do something that kind of gets my brain started. And then I go into working and I give they give me a couple of hours in the morning to just kind of do what I need to do to focus on what I need to focus on. And then after that, you know, it's kid time and it's, you know, time for us to spend outside and to go play and do our thing. And then we come back and I may do a little bit more work or I may go to, you know, start making dinner or I mean, my husband also works nights. So he's not there <laughs> at night and he's not there in the mornings because he's sleeping, trying to catch up. So yeah, it's just, I have to keep that routine because if I don't, it is chaos. Let's talk about how you found your, your new calling. So you, you got laid off or, or let go, whatever, after the, after the hospital got bought out Yes. and suddenly you're laid off and that led into life insurance, which I guess, okay, hospital life insurance, I can kind of, <laughs> I can kind of see that. To me, it's a completely different field. I'm sorry. It's just completely yes. different field. How did you navigate that? I mean, what inspired um, you to embrace this? So when I got laid off, I was kind of, I wanted something new and different. I have worked in revenue integrity for so many years. I woke up thinking about it. I went to bed thinking about it. That's all I knew. And I was constantly in my head, numbers would run and bills and things like that with the hospital. So I did revenue integrity. When I was laid off, it was like, I don't have anything. And for some reason, this kept the life insurance stuff kept coming up and coming up and coming up. And I'm like, I don't want to do this. I can't do this. I don't want to. I don't know anything about it. I don't want to mess with it. And the more I I kept just ignoring it, the more it kept getting into my face, the more it kept pushing. And I'm like, God's got a reason. He put me here for something and I have to listen. So I opened up a door and I got into it and I found some really great people who mentor me. And I think that's been the best thing. They've taught me so much about the importance of financial education. And that has just grown my, my passion for it and my, my love to help people with their security and how to how to keep their security for when they retire because I didn't do it my parents didn't do it so I didn't know but then I just I developed a passion and now I just want to teach people I just want to show them look <laughs> this is what you can do everybody can do it well I don't know about you but start starting a business in a field where you had like zero experience must have been crazy scary okay it would have been for me it was intimidating <laughs> what are some of the biggest challenges you faced while you were making this transition fear so my confidence level dropped like tremendously and I was I just sat there not knowing what to do I didn't know what my next step was I would sit there and I'd look at it. I'd be lost. There's, there's a lot of social media aspect to it that I was just like, I... uh -oh. uh -oh. prayed that God would give me strength to open my eyes in the morning and get out of bed 
and do this again and try it again. <laughs> and it finally, it, I fell into that routine, another routine of just learning this and try. I just had, it's, I tell my children all the time, throw your shoulders back and walk into a room. That's what you need to do. You have to be brave and just do it. And that's what I had to do. I had to take my own advice. You were mentioning before that you've developed a, a passion for helping people prepare for their future because you you know, because because you didn't, your parents didn't. Um, that's kind of like, I mean, I understand that because that's why I do what I do. I'm, you know, I'm passionate about making sure people have income streams because I didn't. <laughs> and suddenly I was unemployed, right. no money coming in. Mm -hmm. So that, that does kind of fire you up when you walk that walk yourself. What what aspects of, of this really resonate with you? How do you bring that passion into your daily work? I really see it. So I go, again, I go back to my kids. I want to teach them. I want them to know. And I want them to understand exactly what it means to be secure. And I, I laugh and I make a joke and tell them all the time. It's because I don't want you coming to me when I'm 80 asking for money. You got to have your own. <laughs> so, so they're like, so I try, I want so bad for them or their friends or my friends to understand this because it's, so I try, I try really hard to help people. I've always wanted to have, I always had a mission mind. Like I wanted to, and I, and I just felt like I never opened my heart up to what God was telling me to do. And that I believe that this is a mission minded goal for me that I want people to know and understand and be secure. You talked about fear a little bit ago. And I know that for, mm -hmm. for a lot of the women that are thinking about starting a business, fear and uncertainty are the things that are holding them back. Nothing else. They have the skills. They have the knowledge. They're just afraid. Yep. So what advice would you give to someone who is afraid to take that first step? That's a hard one because it was extremely hard for me to do it. And I, 10 years ago, wouldn't have had this support system that I have now. And it was hard for me to look at myself in the mirror and have that confidence. But when I, I had to tell myself I was worth it. I had to tell myself I was enough and that I could do this. And I could just, like I said, throw my shoulders back and walk into a room and know exactly what I'm about to do. I had to do it and just face my fears and go, because fear can either cripple us or it can, it can make you on fire and make you work harder and make you not want to fail. And I think that that's where fear pushed me. It pushed me to be out of my comfort zone. And it taught me that it's okay. It's okay to fail. It's okay to not, not do everything perfectly and know that everything's not going to work just right. I'm going to have objections and I'm going to have people tell me no and I'm going to have people laugh in my face, but it's okay because I have a goal and that, that surpasses that fear that I have to get over. Now, I, I know from talking to you that your faith is, is very important to you. Um, it's a big part of who you are. How, mm -hmm. how has your faith evolved over the years and how does it guide your decisions in both, both personally and in your business? My faith is huge. It is, it is one of the things that does lead me and guide me. I, I have been a church goer all my life and I have, I guess it wasn't, so I knew the Bible. I knew what I needed to do. I knew who I needed to be, but in my thirties, I realized that it's no longer my parents' understanding of the Bible. It's my understanding of God and that it was my relationship and my personal, personal stuff that needed to be taken care of. That was in my thirties. And that's what helped me push and teach my children. And then, I mean, it took until I was in my forties to really understand that my faith is what everything centers on my entire goal in life isn't to be a successful money-making woman my goal in life is to my my purpose 
is for God, is for him to, to be my, my center and to my focus. And if that's my focus, then everything else comes into play. Everything else comes and he leads me where I need to go as long as I'm listening. And that's where my faith shows me it's okay. It's okay. I just have to sit back and I can't remember the verse it is, but he tells us, sit back. I got you. It's okay. It is okay. Well, it sounds like you're absolutely in a great season of your life to be serving both God and your family and your your clients and customers. How, um, how do you see yourself continuing to serve both God and others through your work? I pray a lot <laughs> because it is hard sometimes and it is hard to keep that path and to stay on course. And I am in a good season now, but I have been in seasons that were scary and I've been in seasons that have kept me down. I have been in seasons where I didn't even want to be here anymore. And that's what's so cool about now is like, I can look at that and I go, Hey, I learned and I became stronger. And that fear that we talked about, I can, I can just go, okay, I got this. That fear is over here, but I can do this here because now I've got, I've got that confidence. I've got, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to talk about that without getting emotional sometimes because it has been a, a journey. It has been a huge journey. All the stories that I have that of life that have brought me to the point of nothing to be where I'm at now. And I hope and pray that I can just continue. And like I said, it is a daily thing. I have to wake up in the morning and I have to put my mind right and I have to pray and I have to put myself in a position where I'm like, okay, God, today's your day. Take it from me. I don't want it. <laughs> you, you take it, you control it, <laughs> you do it. <laughs> so do you feel that your spiritual growth because i know you talked a lot about the transition from you know your parents viewpoint to your viewpoint yes. do you feel that that growth has has impacted the way you serve and support your clients absolutely i i was very i had a very fake relationship with christ and i know that sounds kind of crazy because i knew him but it wasn't real and it and how I've grown to develop an actual relationship has shaped everything I do. It 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 affects literally everything I do to the point of how I get out of bed, how I how I conduct my day, how I go to bed, everything about that faith that I have developed and grown and learned over the last several years has shaped everything I do. So you said that success isn't just money. You don't see yourself as being just out for the money. Although Proverbs 31 does applaud the fact that she's very adept at making money. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and it's a part of being a Proverbs 31 woman. Okay. That's right. <laughs> but that's not all there is, ladies. Okay. It's not all just about the money. What does success mean to you at this point in your life? So... Being at this point, success means to me that I won, I won a day. So here's, this is what we kind of say. We, we win a day and my success is not dependent for me. It's not dependent on what paycheck I get on a daily basis or, you know, how many, how many clients I've developed that day. My success is based on the fact that I did it. That I, that I legitimately woke up and I did what I was supposed to do. And I talked to that person I was supposed to talk to. And that's, for me, that's a success. And the reason it's a success for me is because my children get to see that and they get to see me, they get to see me be proud of what I've done. And that's a success. My success lies in how I raise them and how I show them that, you can be strong because I have four girls out of out of the six children and those four girls, they've got to know that they can be strong, that they can do this. They can push and they can be successful as a person and as a Christian and as a entrepreneur or as whatever it is they've decided they want to be. 
they can be successful and it doesn't have to have a monetary amount put on it. So has that definition of success, has that changed over the years? I mean, particularly after going through the divorce and has that changed somewhat? Yes, absolutely. I, we, in my first marriage, it was rough and we didn't, we were so young and we didn't have anything and it was really hard and it was hard because I wanted perfection and I wanted I wanted that car that looked good and I wanted the clothes that looked good and I wanted the hair that looked good. And I needed, I needed things to be looking perfect so that everybody else thought that everything was good. And that was what I based my success off of. That's it was, I felt good because people thought I was successful. And then I, I working for the hospital system. I made, I made okay money and it was good. And I was, I remember thinking, you know, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I make good money. I'm good. And then that was totally taken away from me. And then it's like, you know, <laughs> that was my success. I was good at it. I did good. And then, yeah, I mean, it has shaped. It has changed the way that I see everything and changed the way being laid off changed the way that I see everything. So as a mother and an entrepreneur, uh, one of the things that I talk a lot about is because much like you, my definition now has changed. And I talk yeah. a lot about leaving, building, building a legacy for my kids and my grandkids. As a mother and a, new, a brand new entrepreneur, what kind of legacy do you hope to leave for your children? Gosh, I hope and pray that they see they see something that they can do. That I didn't necessarily go to school for this. I mean, I went and got licenses. I did stuff like that. But I hope and pray that what they see and what I leave behind is that they see somebody strong who is able to walk through some of the things that we have walked through the kids and I together, all the things that we have walked through that they can look back and see strength and they can see that I, I left with them a faith that they understand and something that they, how, how do I, sorry, I don't even know how to say that, that like, I, I don't know. I pray that they see me as something strong so that they know that they can do the same things. And that they can do the same thing I do. This, the life insurance, I, I pray that they do this. I pray that they understand financial education. And I can leave all of that to them and that they can be good stewards of what God has given them. So, so looking back, is there a, a moment or like a turning point that you might consider pivotal? Pivotal. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Pivotal. <laughs> Not nearly enough coffee today, folks. <laughs> or too much, depending. Right. <laughs> anyway, that you would consider like important in, in shaping the life and the business that you have today. Where was where was that defining moment that said this is what I'm doing now? Um the moment. I think that said that this is what I'm doing was, uh, but I guess when my husband and I, my current husband and I got married, he has supported me in so many ways and has, I always tell him, I always tell him, thank you for supporting my crazy. Cause <laughs> I don't know anybody else who would, <laughs> but he's, he has supported me in more ways for the last probably five years. And when I got laid off, he was very good about, it's okay. We'll figure this out. We're going to figure out, you know, what God has in store for you. Cause there's got to be something new and there there's got to be something different. Cause it's not, it's not in revenue integrity anymore. And so I feel like the most pivotal point was when, you know, I was, I, I kept getting it in my face and I finally made that phone call of, okay, here we go. Let's do it. 
and, and I, I need to do this. I've got to do this. And that was probably, I mean, I'm so new to this. So within the last six, seven, eight months, I, that was about the time where I was like, I can actually do this and I can be successful at this in a way that's successful for my definition of sex successful. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, to have someone that's willing to support you like that is rare indeed. It is absolutely rare. And yes, <laughs> very blessed. <laughs> well, you've had quite the journey. I mean, divorce, yes. job loss, remarriage, six kids. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Six <Yeah>. children. <laughs> I always say that God only sent me one because he knew any more than that. And I would, I would jump. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think of six. I'm like, oh my gosh, how does she do it? <laughs> okay. It is so much fun. Like there's something different every single day. So much fun. <laughs> Well, on top of all of that, and then you start a business, which I applaud, by the way, because too many women in your shoes would have just sat back and said, okay, I'm just going to sit back and put my feet up and whine and boohoo until, you know, let my husband support me, whatever. Yep. I mean, it happens. I, I see it all the time. I lost my job. I don't know what to do. Oh, no. What inspired yep. you to keep going? Even, even when some of these challenges, they sound like they've been pretty close to overwhelming at times. What inspires you? Um, I think it's the kids. I think, I think it is the kids and teaching me because they've taught me almost as much as I've taught them. Cause they're, I mean, I'm telling you, God gave us these kids for a reason and good grief. <laughs> I think they've taught me so much, but they give me, they give me purpose and they, they show me that I have to wake up every morning. I cannot just sit there and not do anything. They have to know, they have to know God. They have to know me. They have to know what to do next and who's going to teach them. And we can't just send them out and let somebody else do it. We have to do it. They keep me going and they keep me moving. It's my lifeblood. They are everything. <laughs> children are quite inspiring at times. I'll tell you that because you're right. You have to, I mean, you have to, you have to get up for them. You, yep. have, to, you have to keep going no matter what. So I get it. <laughs> what's next for you? Just, you know, what's next? I mean, you've got a brand new business. So what's next? Are there any new goals, new dreams that you're currently working toward? I, I feel like, a. am 47, but I feel like I'm a kid in a candy store now. Cause I have, you know, once I got laid off, it was like, I have a whole new world here to me and I can do anything. So it's like, okay, but I want, and I know it, it's, it sounds like it's one of those things that my husband and I have talked about this several times, but I want to have a church camp where children can come and find God. And I want to have the property and I want to be able to open it up. And I want to be able to have those camps that come and they feel God's presence and he, he's there. And that's, that's something that is so beautiful to me. And so, I don't know, it's been a big dream for ours for the last probably only a couple of years now we've talked about it and we've kind of kind of thought oh, it's a pipe dream. It's never going to happen, but God can do anything. So that's something that we kind of want to work towards and, and do, I really have a desire to help people. Like I said, I mean, this, the, the life insurance, not just the life insurance, but people as well. So I would love to, um, I would love to kind of delve into something for Christian women with, di uh, of divorce, because that's something that nobody talks about. Oh my God. And, 
you, I mean, there's so many aspects of it and so many ways that people have been treated. And that is something that I want to, I would love to write a book about it. I would love to, <laughs> to chat with people and just be an inspiration and show people. I mean, I was there. And anyways, that that's the kind of things and the goals that we have. I want to do stuff like that. I want to have, I want to continue with my mission mind. And I want to continue with not only teaching people financial education so you can secure yourself, but I want people to be able to come to a safe place like a church camp. And I want people to be able to talk to other women about Christian women being of divorce. Yes, because a lot of dream. divorced, uh, it's like all your friends just poof, vanish because um, they're all, they're all still couples. Yep. And, they're all, and there's, there's those that look down their nose at you because good Christian women don't get divorced. That's right. Yeah. So been there, done that. Yes. <laughs> much, much needed. Some kind of support group for, yes, much needed. Let me know. I'll be your first member. I'm not divorced. Awesome. Yet, and I'm remarried and happily, but still, <laughs> I but still we what it was like. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's part of our life. It's part of our story and it doesn't go away. So. Ah, that's awesome. That's, that's awesome. Well, this has been fascinating. One yes. last thing. Okay. Because yes. one of the things that this is part of the women who inspire series and one of the things I always ask the women to, when they're um, as their last little thing is for all the women out there who are sitting here listening to you and now they're they're looking at their kids and they're looking at their husbands, you know, they're looking at their life with a new, you know, new eyes because they're thinking, OK, if she can do this, maybe I can do this. What little words of encouragement, inspiration, advice, what would what would you say to them at this moment to get them up and get them to take that step? And maybe it's not even building a business. Maybe it's, but just something that they've been dreaming about that they've been afraid to do because they think there's just, they just can't do it. What would you say to them? I say, start your day with prayer and ask God to lead you that day. And I promise you, he's going to put whatever it is in front of you that you need to do. And those dreams are in your head for a reason. He has put them there for a reason. So just do it. You just have to step out there and do it. Throw your shoulders back. Be confident. Know who you are and whose child you are. And just walk through it. You have to push the fear aside. And that's hard. That's hard, hard, hard to push that fear and anxiety away in order to start something. But you just have to do it. You just have to step out there and be confident in who you are and whose child you are. You heard that, ladies. Straighten your crown and get to work. That's okay. right. We're daughters of the king. So let's go. <laughs> Sherry, this has been awesome. I so appreciate it because I know that there's women out there right now, like I said, that have been terrified to make that move because they just think they can't figure it out. And you're showing them that it, that it can, that it can happen. And you're reminding them that, yes, those those dreams that they have, those things that they think they want to do that are, that are, I call it that thing that sets your soul on fire. When you find that thing yes. that sets your soul on fire and you ignore it, yeah, that's that's a wake up call, ladies. OK, that's a wake up call. That's a yep. message. It's saying, go do this. OK, <laughs> so yep. I know there's ladies out there now that are listening to this and going, you know, maybe it's time. So I thank you for joining us. I'm hoping, yes, thank I'm hoping you. these ladies will, will now take that step. And for those of you who know someone who maybe needs that little push. Do us all the favors. You know what to do. Like, share, comment, all the stuff. Hit the buttons. You know where they are. We're trying to build the Rebel Tribe, of this community of women that are trying to support each other and help each other and help us all live better, more fulfilled lives. So have a great day, and I appreciate you all. And thanks so much, Sherry.